What is the deal with the 2 a.m. wake-ups? Your kid is in their bed, cozy and asleep. They've got all the loveys. They've got the nightlight. They've got the white noise. So why the heck do they keep waking up in the middle of the night? This is one of the most frustrating problems because you're dead asleep too and all you want is for this to not be happening. Let's look at exactly why this is happening. There's typically three main causes and the last one is probably the culprit at your house. Most people assume that their child is waking up because of a nightmare. I mean, what else would wake a kid up from a dead sleep, right? I mean, it seems logical. Nightmares can happen occasionally, so this is the first possible cause. Around the age of three, kids' imaginations start to go wild, so it's definitely possible that they could start to have some scary dreams based on something that they've seen or heard. With a nightmare, most kids can go back to sleep pretty easily with a hug and some gentle reassurance. Nightmares can happen occasionally, but it's unlikely that they're going to wake your child up every single night, and they're certainly not going to wake your child up multiple times a night. So if you're seeing frequent night wake-ups, then nightmares are not the cause. Another option that could be waking your child up overnight is a night terror. Now, most people think that a night terror is when your child is hysterically upset, almost inconsolable, having like a major, major meltdown in the middle of the night. But a true night terror has some very defined characteristics. So night terrors typically happen in the first few hours of sleep, so before midnight. Your child may wake up crying or screaming. They may be saying things like no or stop. It can be really scary to see. I have personal experience with this. My older daughter had night terrors and they may be, you know, thrashing around in the bed or my daughter would be like walking around her room just seeming really disoriented. But with night terrors, your child is still asleep. They may appear to be awake, but they are not awake. They will not recognize when you come into the room. They will not say your name. They will not be comforted if you come closer to them or try to touch them because they are actually still asleep during a night terror. So this is really different than a child who's just having like a middle of the night temper tantrum where they're asking for things, but seeming really inconsolable. You know, the classic like, I want milk. And then you try to give them a sippy cup of milk and then they're like, no, I don't want that. That is just a temper tantrum. That is not a night terror. If there's any type of dialogue going on between you and the child, that is not a night terror. Because with a night terror, your child is still asleep. And with a true night terror, your child will fall back to sleep as quickly as it started and they will have no memory of the experience in the morning. If you want to learn more about nightmares and night terrors and the difference between the two, check out this video. So if it's not a nightmare or a night terror that's waking your child up every single night or multiple times a night, then what is it? The third option and the main reason why kids wake up in the middle of the night is because they are too reliant on parents at bedtime. Listen up, here's the secret. When kids can fall asleep alone at bedtime, they can stay asleep alone all night long. Here's what I mean. Kids get really used to what they have in their environment when they're falling asleep. So what they have in their bed, what noises they hear, what lights are on, you know, if you're sitting in the room, all of these things are the conditions that your kid needs in order to fall asleep. Now, once we're asleep, we all go through changes in our sleep cycle. We go, you know, deep sleep to lighter sleep, deep sleep to lighter sleep, multiple times through the night. And when we move into a lighter stage of sleep, if all the conditions in our sleep environment are pretty much the same, that's when we just roll over and go back to sleep. We pull up the covers, we roll over, we have no memory of this in the morning. But if something is like missing or different or weird in our sleep environment, when we move into a lighter stage of sleep, our body can sense that and it can cause us to wake up. So like if you're sitting in your child's room when they're falling asleep at bedtime and then they move into a lighter stage of sleep at one o'clock in the morning and they have a sense that you're missing, that can actually cause them to wake up because having you in the room was one of the main conditions that they've gotten used to as they're falling asleep. Now let me give you a really clear example to demonstrate what I'm talking about. If you fall asleep in your bed, you probably sleep pretty well if no one wakes you up. But let's say you fell asleep and then at some point in the middle of the night you wake up and you realize, oh my God, where's my pillow? 
my pillow fell on the floor. That's so weird. When did my pillow fall on the floor? I don't even remember having a crazy dream. Well, now you're awake. Now you've got to pick your pillow up off the floor and try to put yourself back to sleep. That's because the pillow was one of the key things that you needed in order to fall asleep. It was a key part of your sleep environment. And when you moved into a lighter stage of sleep, you realized that it was missing and that woke you up and then you had to go find it and put yourself back to sleep. Bringing this all back to your toddler or preschooler, if they are used to you staying in the room with them as they fall asleep, you've made yourself an integral part of their sleep environment, like a pillow. So whether they're used to you laying in bed with them or sitting in a chair or scratching their back or snuggling them or whatever, you being in the room as they're falling asleep has made yourself part of their sleep environment that they have to have. So even though they're 100% capable of falling asleep on their own, they've gotten so used to you being there, you're part of their sleep environment, just like a pillow. So once you sneak out of her room after she falls asleep at bedtime, she's gonna wake up a few hours later and come find you again. And then you're like, oh my God, she was dead asleep. Why does she keep waking up? What is going on? Well, now you know. She moved into a lighter stage of sleep and she realized that you were missing. You, a crucial part of her sleep environment is gone, so she's got to come find you. So cue the screaming kiddo running into your room at two in the morning, waking you up from a dead sleep. So the key to getting your child to sleep peacefully through the night and eliminate these overnight wake-ups is to get your child comfortable falling asleep totally independently at bedtime. Remember, when kids can fall asleep alone peacefully at bedtime, they can sleep soundly through the night. For more on the subject, check out this video.